that we got our participants are going up. Hello, everyone. We're uh, currently live. We'll give the uh, rest of the folks coming into the meeting uh, another 30, 40 seconds so we can start right on time. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Uh, we're happy you could make it. The uh, topic of today's event is think outside the mailbox. Hopefully everyone here today can leave with a few ideas to help them in 2020. We are here to talk about direct mail, uh, not in a traditional sense though, but in a way that helps you increase your opportunities for engagement to win more business. Uh, we know direct mail consistently delivers some of the most uh, are the best response rates in the uh, marketing world, and I'm excited to show you how we can supercharge your marketing. Just so everybody knows, we're live and recording the event. Uh, give you a couple seconds in case uh, you haven't dialed into the uh, audio. The phone number is at the bottom. And just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, we are recording the event. I'll be sending a copy to everybody. So don't worry if you miss something, uh, we'll have it over to you by tomorrow. Uh, during the event, if you have any questions, there's a chat feature. At the bottom of the screen, there's a little chat icon. Feel free to click the chat icon. Pop up in the, it'll pop open a window in the right corner. Please, please, uh, send lots of questions. We want to hear all your comments and questions uh, during and after the event, so please stick around. Uh, we'll get to all your answers uh, at the end of the session. My name is Steve Ritter, President of Ritter's Communications. Uh, we're a direct mail provider. Uh, I've been in business for over 30 years. We produce marketing programs that increase engagement and drive new opportunities for our clients. I'm happy to introduce longtime friend and business partner, Joe Manos. Uh, he's the executive vice president of MindFire, Inc. They're a mind marketing automation services provider uh, based out of Irvine, California. Hey, Steve. How are you doing today? Happy to be here. You bet, Joe. Uh, Joe has 35 years' experience uh, successfully leading and growing companies uh, while delivering exceptional results in innovative marketing programs. He is a strategic leader focusing on revenue growth initiatives. Uh, he's an accomplished speaker and he works with marketers like us across the globe to deliver optimized results. And we're, uh, we're very glad to have him here today. Today's uh, agenda, why direct mail? Top trends in 2020 how-tos and tips, and Q&A session at the end. So please, everybody, stick around. We'll get to all your questions. And I'm going to pass the baton to Joe. Take it from here. Okay, Steve. Thank you so much for the introduction, and thanks for having me today. Hello, everyone. Again, Joe Manis. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Just getting to Steve and the team. Here's some interesting things. You know, we're still talking about direct mail. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, the only constant in our lives, personally and professionally, is change. And uh, one of the big changes is how direct mail is making a major comeback uh, in all of our lives. So that's really, we're going to talk about that, some strategies to help you grow in 2020, because uh, it's so vitally important. You know, really, when we think about why direct mail, uh, it's because it's grown substantially over the last two years in its marketing efficacy. Uh, many of you stopped using direct mail because uh, it was expensive and you weren't getting the results that you had hoped. And so today we're going to share with you some data points and use cases that will surprise you if you've uh, stopped doing direct mail and arm you with some critical insight into how to achieve better results in 2020. 
So first of all, just as a reminder, today's direct mail, you know, if you're working with the right partner like Ritter's, today's direct mail is, has some unique advantages. First and foremost, it's tangible and portable. It's got staying power. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, think about it. A direct mail piece, uh, when it hits your office <clears throat> or your uh, mailbox at home, depending on, you know, if it's B2B or B2C, it sits there. And I've got two pieces on my desk right now that uh, interest me. I've been so darn busy personally and professionally, I haven't visited the sites associated with the direct mail piece yet, but it sits there as a constant reminder to me that this is something that I'm interested in and I need to take action on when I have a few extra minutes, which I haven't had this month, I'm shocked to say. Uh, so it has staying power. It can, it's a constant reminder. Uh, Canada Post sponsored a study and they said 21% of the folks said it's far easier to process. And uh, direct mail created 70% better brand recall than digital, again, because it's sitting there with that staying power that we spoke of earlier. Uh, and it gets you noticed. USPS, 77 of people sort their mail immediately. Of course, you know, you walk out to the mailbox, you go through it or in your inbox at the office, and you prioritize your follow-up. Not as easy with email, as we all know. And speaking of email, Maybe this looks like your inbox. Uh, I know mine, I, if I showed you my inbox, you, you scream at me. But again, yeah, that's the nature of the beast today. Uh, we're all receiving more emails, uh, even with the different sorting devices that we have. So most of us, if we're brutally honest, we're, we're in email. 51% of us suffer from email fatigue. Uh, half of us rarely or never even open marketing emails. How do we do that? Well, we have a sorting device. We look at the subject line. If it's a customer or prospect uh, or someone internally on your team or an executive you're responding to, you prioritize by looking at that subject line. Uh, and uh, you may never open that email. Uh, the average household only receives two pieces of direct mail per day compared to 157 emails daily. Think of all the emails. Uh, on your personal account that you receive that uh, you never ever respond. You just hit delete, 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 delete. So uh, not surprisingly, uh, there is email overload. Not to mention there's some other dynamics impacting email with spam traps and algorithms that uh, Google has that uh, impact the uh, marketing efficacy of email if you don't know the rules of the road. And let's talk about one group that if this is in your sites for growing your business in uh, 2020, uh, there's a whole nother dynamic at play. You know, millennials uh, really are responding to direct mail in ways we never dreamed possible. And so if this is one of your target audiences, uh, talk about some dynamics that relates to millennials. Uh, you have to know, do read mail and they absolutely love it. 84% uh, of millennials send the mail. 64% would rather scan for useful info in the mail than email. So those are two staggering uh, statistics that we need to be aware of. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Hey, Joe, I'm sorry. I think you were breaking up at the beginning of that slide uh, in case somebody wanted to, uh, to hear the beginning part of that. Would you mind uh, redoing that? The millennial. The, the millennials? Next one there. Okay, great. That's interesting. Uh, thanks for the heads up. Yeah, I was just saying that uh, if millennials are in your target list, then uh, absolutely uh, make sure that we're taking a look at how we should be engaging them. They are responding to direct mail in a way that we never thought possible. Uh, and as we look at some of the data points, 84% of millennials take the time to look uh, through their mail. 64% would rather scan for useful information in the mail than email itself. So uh, it's very clear that millennials do respond. Hey, and Steve, uh, make sure Rob hit the record button because that was on his task list. And when we think about uh, appealing to millennial values, uh, we've included some tips uh, on how to engage millennials uh, because there are some real clear deliverables that are available to you. Uh, you know, now that QR codes uh, are enabled on all smartphones, 
uh, you know, the QR code on the direct mail piece is a really powerful way to connect with millennials. We'll be talking a little more about augmented reality later, but again, another interactive video tied to the AR right messaging for millennials, it's got to be succinct, easy to read, and give those bite-sized pieces of information. You've got to be authentic with the millennials, uh, and even some of the leaders are using enhancements such as sense, sound, and texture to make the piece stand out. So uh, millennials really are all about feeling good about their purchase. So again, any way that you can weave these pieces into the, the overall uh, direct mail really, really helps. So here's a couple of examples. Uh, if you think about targeting millennials, uh, these are two successful programs. Uh, Want to make your commute to work happier, try trading in your car for a bike. It's true. Studies show that people who cycle to work are the happiest of all commuters, <laughs> for obvious reasons if you're in California. Uh, but you get the idea. You know, the, uh, the messaging's got to be on point. Take a look at those helpful hints that we suggested. Uh, for your direct mail if millennials are on your target. You know, personalized design and messaging can excite customers and energize your marketing campaign. So it's more important than ever. If you're going to leverage uh, the direct mail, it's highly personalized messaging and content in that direct mail piece really, really does impact the target recipient. Here's another great piece. Imagine you're a, uh, a new mother or father uh, and a long list of things that are changed in your life. If this is your first, uh, congratulations on your new baby. We'd like to make your busy life a little easier with a free gift. And uh, so a free gift that makes perfect sense. Does that mean you have to use disposable diapers? Not if we can help it. So again, spot on messaging. All right. Now, as we look at the numbers, because at the end of the day, it's all about results. And if you're going to invest in direct mail, we want to see the, the great ROI and the growth of engagement. And the numbers don't lie. The most recent study from DMA says response rates have nearly doubled for direct mail, 9% versus 5% last year in uh, 2019. That's fantastic. That's a huge level of engagement. In fact, uh, it's a higher ROI than online display, and it's growing. And it is the number one response medium. So uh, if you have stopped using direct mail for the reasons I, I stated earlier, well, now's the time to, to really at least test it and get reengaged with it. Higher response rates matter with a smaller universe. And our clients effectively use it, and so do we. So uh, again, I really encourage you to take another look at it. If all else fails, you ought to at least run a pilot to see how well-executed direct mail can start to move your 2020 results forward. All right, so now I'm going to pass the baton back to Steve, and uh, he's going to introduce another part of this direct mail discussion. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, you know, data, this is, uh, this is an area that we're all passionate about over here. Um, in our experience, it is all about the data. So, uh, let's see here. Ah! Apologize, Joe. The, uh, no worries. The, uh, the, the number one problem that, uh, that we see in direct marketing is a bad list, though. Um, we want to make sure you get the offer to the right people. That's most important. Uh, most companies that we find have a hard time maintaining the accuracy um, and cleanliness of their lists. Cleaning the lists... Uh, prior to deployment is a good practice, but uh, most people uh, have a hard time following that. A uh, lot of reasons for this, but mostly it's lack of time, uh, no expertise in-house, or you just don't know where to start. Uh, you know, using your bad data, it, it wastes valuable marketing dollars. Uh, you'd like to spend that in other ways, but uh, nobody wants to miss the available opportunities. Uh, I know I can't in our business. So here are some tips for success here. Uh, selecting and building a target list is critical. Uh, what makes your best customers unique? Or how can we find more of them? We try to find the common traits and, and how to find more just like them. 
So when you're choosing a list, make sure it's a reliable source. Uh, so many companies available to buy data from today, uh, some specialize in consumer or business or financial data, uh, and you just have to do your research before you buy. Once you buy your list, you have to identify if you're missing any elements uh, that you'd look for to expand your marketing reach. Uh, maybe it's the addresses are old and need updating. Uh, maybe you need contact names that are missing or phone numbers. Uh, with big data available uh, today, much more extensive uh, reach, adding email addresses and company and personal demographic information appending uh, to your lists, that's all available now. Uh, now you built your list, you can then personalize your mailing uh, by giving unique messages uh, per person or list segment, uh, which really drives increased response rates. So when you think about your data cycle, look at this example here. This is you know, if you start in the upper left, uh, really step one is merging your available data. You're going to want to append anything that's missing, validate and clean your lists, remove your duplication, standardize for the right output, and then export uh, and proceed. Oop, next. <laughs> there you are, Joe. And, uh, and then it really it's very simple uh, to wrap this up. Better data provides more opportunities uh, for engagement. Uh, that's, that's really the name of the game. And uh, back to you, Joe. Thanks. All right. Thank you. And, you know, we see thousands of programs uh, through our, our customer base. I can just really tell you that uh, I am always shocked at how so many of the companies are, are missing such vital information. If you're going B2B, you know, titles, correct titles, phone numbers, uh, the correct mailing address, uh, all these little things really add up to a lot of wasted money. So, you know, find a partner that can help you clean it up. It really makes a difference. All right, let's go ahead and segue now to direct mail trends for 2020 key considerations. I think there's some real nuggets in here. So let's go ahead and take off. First of all, just by way of introduction, when you think in terms of the, the uh, companies that we get a lot of our data from and our experience and expertise, these are just a, a short list of some of the companies that we work with. We also work with small businesses, medium and large as well. But when we think in terms of looking at our crystal ball for 2020, because of our experience and, and all the different projects we're involved in, uh, we, we see some real clear opportunities that we can wrap around direct mail and, and leveraging direct mail that lead to more success. And at the end of the day, you know, the reason we're hosting this webinar today is just arm you with good insight and information that's going to lead to more success, your success, because uh, there's nobody has all the answers and, and seeing the different use cases is so, so important. So it's time we all reevaluate uh, mail, as we, we said, me. Uh, opening monologue. 40% uh, conversion direct mail combined. So when you think into your that's okay, that amp it up and take it to the next level. 68% of marketing respondents said combining digital and direct mail increases website visits. You know, it's about building that trust, confidence, awareness of why a customer uh, or a company or an individual should consider your product or service. And these are the ways that you can amp up the awareness that leads to more visits. 60% of marketing responders said combining digital and direct mail increases the return on investment. We see that in the programs that we're executing for customers is a clear alignment. The more channels that you have engaged and the, uh, the more touches across the different devices that your, your uh, target audience is using, it's gonna lead to those improved results. And we talked a little bit about email overload. And it's not uncommon in inboxes to see just tons of email. So just another reason to look outside of the email inbox for new areas of opportunity and growth. And your partner, USPS, they're looking for ways to help you achieve more success with direct mail. And in fact, they're incenting you to take a look at 
the ways that you can leverage USPS direct mail uh, in new innovative ways. Now, one of those new tools is informed delivery. And this is a significantly uh, big growth area for USPS and the consumers that are using it. Informed delivery uh, is a consumer facing feature offered by USPS that provides users with digital previews of your household mail arriving soon. And these mailers can integrate uh, digital campaign elements to enhance and extend the mail moment. So as you see on that, that phone there, I've just gotten an informed delivery that shows me a scanned image of the exterior of incoming letter sized mail pieces uh, processed through their automated equipment. And again, we can get these images via email notification, online dashboard, or the mobile app. So using this, uh, if the mailer conducts an informed delivery interactive campaign, supplemental content can be shown for the letters and postcards or flaps. And this can include custom image set, uh, and again, write along images. So again, A, it shows you what's coming in the mail. B, there's a way to, to enhance that experience that makes it more meaningful to the consumer. So looking at it visually, you know, the direct mail piece is sent. You got the digital preview with ride along content that I spoke of. You can see the example on the phone. The direct mail is, is received, and then we can carry that interaction to uh, in-store action. So now direct mail is playing an even more significant uh, role. And uh, again, this is what's leading to new innovative use cases. And the best point of all is it's free. It's absolutely free. And uh, you can take advantage of this service starting immediately. But maybe you're not convinced direct mail is able to drive digital actions just yet. So let's, let's talk about some other examples. So first of all, let's look at the data point. The results of coordinating digital and direct mail will deliver 68% increase in website visits, 63% increased response rate, that's pretty darn significant, 60% increase in return on investment, 53% increased leads, 39% increase in traffic to a physical store or business location, and 11% increase in downloads. So all of these dynamics make it very, very clear that there is power in taking your direct mail to the next level. Yeah, by using direct mail in and of itself, you'll start to see improved engagement right out of the gate. Remember the data point we saw earlier, uh, went from 5% in 19 to 9% uh, uh, in the last year. So this is a huge area of opportunity. There are other steps we can take to even drive increased traction. And when we look at it, it increases 51% awareness, 68% consideration, 52% transactions, 60% in usage, and 13% in advocacy. So all very, very positive trend numbers uh, when leveraging the direct mail and digital channels. Now we look at how the companies are coordinating the campaigns. What can we learn from that? Well, 80% drive traffic from the direct mail to digital channels, and it's very easy to do. 76% integrate a unique URL or discount code in the direct mail, which is really, really effective in driving uh, results. 61% time in the digital media, media once direct mail is delivered to customers, so you can set up those schedules so that they're follow on. 51% are sending personalized direct mail based on online behavior. So again, if you use some of these online tool, we can coordinate the digital action, excuse me, the direct mail action to follow the digital uh, behavior. 49% creating a digital version of the direct mail piece, strong, strong strategy, 15% using QR codes in direct mail, and I expect to see that number go up significantly because it, in the old days, we had to download an app to get a QR code reader. Now it's built uh, in the mobile device already. And 7% are embedding AR or VR in direct mail, augmented reality and virtual reality. Now, we'll see that number continue to grow. It's still in its infancy and there's some really cool use cases out there, 
but that number will continue to grow in the future. <clears throat> All right, so as I mentioned just a few seconds ago, QR resurgence. As I mentioned, it's built in the camera. You can jump to a URL, pearls, personalized URL, and so on very easily. It's a frictionless way to go from direct mail to web. And uh, again, you can see in the settings, uh, scan QR codes needs to be activated in your mobile phone uh, and keep normal photos as well. Once that's done, you're good to go. So when you see a QR code in that direct mail piece, you can go ahead and scan that and off you go to the related page uh, or image, whatever the associated uh, action is. Now let's talk about just one example of augmented reality. All the study data I've been reviewing over the last six months in preparation for 2020 shows, uh, as we saw from the recent data point, an increase. And it's only gonna continue as uh, folks like yourself become more comfortable and the use cases continue to grow dynamically. Uh, so, again, highlighting the image, when you scan the polar bear on any holiday can or bottle, you, the bears come to life. And there's all sorts of innovative use cases. That's just one sample example, but uh, stay tuned. That's going to be uh, a growth area in the future. All right, now let's talk about Facebook. Uh, I can't tell you how often when I'm guest speaking or in meetings with marketers, uh, they often say, well, my, my customers aren't on Facebook uh, or Instagram or even LinkedIn. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, and the, the reality is that uh, when they say, well, my decision makers aren't on that social media channel, I ask them why they feel that way. And it's just because, well, they're a senior executive. They're busy. Well, if that's one of your target audience, you know, my standard uh, answer is that, well, the result data shows differently. Uh, it shows clearly these folks are visiting uh, social media, and they're taking action on things that interest them in the newsfeed. Um, and the reality is that all of our campaigns that we're running show the same. So how do you bring that all together? Well, it's real simple. You, as part of your direct mail program, you've got your target database. And we simply take that target database and we create a custom audience in Facebook, and then you see about a 50% match rate. So if you had 10,000 prospects in your database, we get a match rate of about 50% of the custom audience. And then we can start to target those folks with our newsfeed ads. And we can leverage all that big data that exists in Facebook's world uh, for lookalike audiences and additional match opportunities for our targeted recipients. So there's a powerful tool there where you can take your direct mail and now amp it up and take it to the next level by leveraging social media. Now when we think about you know, all the different ways, depending on what your, your marketing objective is, we can start to use Facebook in all sorts of opportunity areas that you never dreamed possible. So it, it really is a powerful tool that is driving increased engagement. Let me give you an example. We ran a program for a uh, country club recently that was trying to amp up new membership sales. And in the first two weeks of the program, we had 7,000 direct mail pieces that were sent. We had email and we had social media, Facebook and Instagram uh, newsfeed ads. In the first two weeks, we had 300 sales ready responses that came in. Interestingly, 150 of those leads came from the Facebook, Instagram newsfeed ads I'm speaking of, 105 of the sales ready leads came off the direct mail piece with a pearl, and 95 of the leads came from the email. Now, a couple points to note. A, it was a house list, so they had pretty good quality data that we, Steve spoke of earlier. B, uh, the offer and the messaging and the creative were excellent, all important considerations for a successful program. But the symmetry of response rates between the, the 300 sales rate leads that came in the first two weeks uh, is amazing. You know, again, 150 from the Facebook ad, 105 from the direct mail piece, and 95 from email. That's the power of those multi-channel programs. All right. There's another really exciting opportunity for the folks on the call today, and that's intent data. And really what that allows you to do is 
through a variety of tools, find folks that have interests. You can look at target accounts, your net accounts, existing customers, and allows us to, through the folks searching for various content, allows us to find these folks who might be looking and consuming content products that they are interested in or need, and it's consumed, the intent data identifies the folks, their demographics, and the data showing surges in who these folks are so that we can then start to market to them. So think of a way as identifying through another tool those folks that are searching for information on this product or service and that there's an easy way to get them engaged with our overarching mar marketing. Now, we can save dollars on postage uh, when we're using uh, some of these other tools, personalized color trans promo, uh, tactile sensory and interactive mail pieces, mobile shopping, emerging and advanced technology. So again, as I stated earlier, the USPS is incenting uh, their user community to take advantage of these emerging technologies to make direct mail more effective. So the USPS is interested in your success with direct mail, so they're trying to wrap it with incentives to have you use some of these other tools that will drive improved results. Okay, so in summary, <clears throat> when we think about all these, these uh, tools available to you to grow uh, your results for 2020, direct mail is cool again, and the results are, are quite significant. You can no longer ignore it. Informed delivery is growing rapidly in an opportunity area. Combining direct mail and digital drives real results. QR codes are back and very effective. Intended Reality Mail Interactive, and Facebook, Google, and others can warm up your direct mail as, as we showed. Intent data can help you target people at the right time, and you can save big dollars on posters when tapping into these trends. So uh, kind of a great summary. So let me take a time out here, and based on the different areas that we touched on in the last section, informed delivery, QR codes, augmented reality, using Facebook to warm up uh, and big data to improve direct mail return on investment, and number five, using intent data to find people with buying intent to target with direct mail, and finally, saving money on postage when connecting direct mail with emerging digital channels. Go ahead and type in the chat box which areas or the number one area of those six that you see the most relevant opportunity for you to grow your revenues in 2020. I'll give you, you know, 30, 40 seconds to type that in so the team can, can uh, see what the responses are. It looks like Katarina uh, had a question on informed delivery. I don't see the the uh, if there was a bigger question there, but if if you do have a bigger question, uh, please just type it in and we'll we'll answer it for sure. Um, and I'll give you another few seconds before uh, before we see what the number one and two categories were. And Jenny and Steve, I can't see the uh, text for some reason. Let me just see over here. Uh, but if you could just let me know which category uh, had the, uh, the greatest responses, I'd be interested to know. Oh, here we got text here. Hold on. Yeah, Joe, we see some informed delivery. Uh, there's there's some Facebook warm-up. Uh, Good. As well as, as well as some uh, saving money on postage and, and with the different new uh, the new programs. Oh, good. Okay, so those are the top three. That's great. Um, certainly, as we touched on earlier, these are all wonderful areas of uh, leveraging direct mail uh, for marketing efficacy. And uh, again, uh, working with the 
Steve and his team, they can certainly answer more questions about those specifics. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions. You'll see my contact information at the end. Okay, great. So there we go. We got our top three. Thank you for that, everyone. Joe, can All I right. get you to pause for just one second here? Katarina Jones was asking a question if the data that we were talking about earlier was based yep. on B2B or B2C, uh, the response data. Um, Oh, on the for the uh, golf course uh, program. No, how campaigns are campaigns? how companies are coordinating campaigns. Uh, what, you know, what does the data do is in terms of drawing awareness, and uh, what are the results of coordinating digital and DM? It was it was the slides with the blue um, on the left, and then they had the the, the statistics pie on the right, and the pie charts on the right. Yeah. So um, so frankly, uh, our experience crosses uh, Katrina both. Uh, sides of the uh, the equation, uh, B to B and B to C. So um, I'll go back and check that data point on that specific slide and, and see if it was B to B or B to C. But uh, our experience working with our customers across the globe, uh, you know, we're we're seeing these tools and these programs cross both uh, B to C and B to B. Obviously, the messaging. Uh, for B2C is much different than the B2B and the offers and the like, but all of the digital and direct mail uh, tools are being used in conjunction uh, for both B2B and B2C. Uh, in fact, one data point I haven't touched on today that I often speak of when guests speaking with marketers is that our target audience, regardless of B2B or B2C, is available on seven different channels and four devices in a 24-hour period. So to the extent that we're using direct mail uh, and some of these other channels uh, and crossing the different channels, uh, it does lead to higher levels of engagement uh, than any one channel by itself. Hopefully that helps and uh, you know we'll take some time and follow up with you personally, uh, further iteration of that question. Okay, so let's, uh, let's kind of go to the next step, the must-haves for success five steps for uh, success in today's programmatic world. So when we think in terms of uh, preparing for a successful program, no matter how small or big that program is, we want to set clearly defined goals. You know, what is the outcome that you hope to achieve that you don't currently have today? And one of the pitfalls I find for most customers, and you see it in their creative, is that often they'll have five or six big hairy objectives they're trying to achieve from one program and then the creative and the direct mail piece and some of the digital pieces uh, they just reflect that there's no clearly defined goal um, communicate with all stakeholders uh, make sure you've got buy-in and support from everyone start six to eight weeks from the in-home delivery it's amazing how often this is compromised and so there's a big rush at the end and again it, it really does impact your overall results so please plan posters can be <coughs> excuse me up to 60 percent of the budget and again in the old days where maybe you weren't getting the results that you'd hoped uh that was a deal uh killer but in today's world where the uh level of efficiency and eff efficacy that we're achieving um, there's really no reason to not consider it in today's world. Measure it, you know, leverage QR codes, trackable phone numbers, campaign specific URLs, coupon codes, CTAs, call to actions, and control groups, and ask an expert early on for help and guidance uh, because it will save you time and money in the long run. The list. We talked about it earlier. Key for success of your campaign. As I stated earlier, it is the number one failure point for a lot of programs, and it's shocking how little time is spent in reviewing the list and how often, you know, five or 10% of that list is, it just has bad data in it. Uh, are we gonna use just a house list, like the example I stated earlier, a prospect list or both? Develop lookalikes by profiling, actionable CRM data, you know, that's only going to help you. Your data can be appended and segment and personalize. Offers matter. Um, it, they really do matter in today's world. It doesn't always mean you have to give a gift card or, or something significant, but uh, it is a top driver of program results. Uh, in many cases, 
uh, since uh, on the B2B side, many prospects want to consume three to five pieces of content before they ever see a sales rep. Um, you know, often high value content uh, or a case study or an ebook, uh, a video uh, are all very, very impactful. Uh, and that could be the, the uh, offer. You know, visit your personalized site to download an ebook on such and such. Clear and concise. Consistent omni-channel experience, meaning that if you are using more than one channel, that you have that consistent offer uh, across all the channels. It has to resonate with the prospect, and personalization is key, absolutely. Right time, right audience, and right offer. Now, when we think in terms of the creative and format, test the creative. You know, uh, so often, like I said earlier, we might have way too much creative. Uh, get creative with it, the look and feel, uh, get lots of feedback. Refreshing creative and mixing the formats can mitigate mail fatigue. You've got to meet USPS guidelines or else. And even the best creative cannot overcome a bad offer or list, as stated earlier. Now, we think in terms of action plan, follow-up, and continuous improvement, uh, always have a follow-up plan. We have literally helped customers generate hundreds, hundreds of high value leads. And when I call the president to say, hey, Sam, hey, Sally, or Sue, how'd the team do? Uh, how many calls were made? What were the results of the calls? How many meetings were set, et cetera? I'm shocked often to hear, oh, we haven't called anyone yet. You have to have a follow-up plan. If someone's displaying interest in your offer, your content, whatever the case may be, you have to make that connection. Uh, triggered and automated follow-ups can help in continuing the dialogue. Got to have a post-mortem. What do we learn? Uh, what do we want to do differently next time? What worked exceptionally well? And what's next and what should we do differently? All right, so now I'm going to turn it back to Steve as we start to wrap up and get prepared to answer some questions. Steve? Thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, great content, Joe. Uh, thanks again. Uh, you know, looking into what's next, uh, you know, really bullet point three steps, uh, you know, looking into 2020 is, uh, you know, if you'd like to schedule a, uh, you know, free, no, <laughs> no uh, arm twisting on our end, uh, a phone call with us uh, to, to just check up on any, any problems or questions or, or uh, agenda items you have for 2020. Uh, Starting with the uh, the data discussion, you know, we'll help you take a look at your data. We'll give you, a, you know, a little bit of an audit, uh, help you out uh, to get started and, and jumpstart your next uh, process. Uh, and even beyond that, if you have any other uh, outlying agenda items for uh, for your marketing plan for the rest of 2020, uh, by all means, we can, you know, we can sit down and uh, it doesn't doesn't cost anything to uh, to talk about it. All right. You're on the next uh, personal, Joe? Yep. Okay, fantastic. So uh, so let's go ahead and uh, kind of start to wrap up. And I, I know we've got some questions coming in, so we'll have time to uh, go ahead and talk about those. So one of the areas uh, on 2020 roadmap that is clearly uh, delivering better results is obviously personalization. And they're all sizes and shapes of how personalization is being executed. Uh, one of our customers achieved 20% increase in response with simple personalization. So it's shocking, uh, you know, how small changes can deliver uh, huge results. 80% more are more likely to respond to a personalized offer and consumers are okay with responsible use of their preferences. Uh, and that can lead to more opt-ins. So, uh, again, if you can use uh, preference data, it's all in how you execute that. Now, when we think in terms of the lift being enjoyed by folks that do it right with personalization, 59% say that website and email personalization, personalization influences their shopping decisions. 77% have recommended chosen or paid more for a brand that provides a personalized service, and 78% will only engage offers if they've been personalized to their previous brand engagements. So 
uh, again, when you start to get to that level of sophistication where you're tracking the responses, you're starting to tee up personalized offers based on uh, what their, where their interests lie, uh, now you, you really, really do an exceptional job. Here's some uh, wrap-up creative uses for some of the, the uh, tools we talked about today through direct mail and others. Uh, dimensional direct mail uh, for high value targets is a real home run. We're seeing new innovative use cases every day. And one of our large finance customers uh, selling loans uh, sends a big box to uh, target recipients and uh, it had you know those big round fireball uh, candies big box and uh, said, you know, let us fire up your, your lending. Um, and uh, it was for lenders that they were helping. So uh, real successful open rate there. And there's a lot of other really neat innovative use cases. Uh, retargeting. You know, we see people engaged, but they haven't taken the call to action. Let's retarget them. And this is a really effective way to stay on the radar and uh, get them to take that next step. Uh, shopping cart uh, abandonment is another area of opportunity where we see that folks are engaged, they're involved, but they're not taking that final step. How can we keep on the radar? There are all sorts of ways to help you with that. Uh, loyalty and lead gen programs. It's amazing uh, how poorly some loyalty programs are being executed. Uh, direct mail uh, used more effectively and some of the digital channels supporting it has really been a godsend for some of our customers. For any of you that run events, uh, we ran a really exciting, very successful beef and brew event uh, for a, a builder that was building uh, high-end homes uh, in uh, San Antonio and uh, did a really cool event for them uh, that uh, really drove the type of results that they were looking for. Uh, also along the the lines of event marketing, if you're doing any trade shows, if you participate in trade shows, uh, we have a three-step innovative trade show program, pre-show marketing, during the show marketing, where your targeted audience and attendees are actually receiving emails, text messages, tweets during the day to drive them in the booth, and post-show marketing. Uh, it's really a well-executed program. That's an example of rather than just showing up at the trade show with your literature, really executing a much better event. Uh, key touches in the nurturing sequence, drive more online interaction, and if you've been thinking of something, but you're not sure how to execute it or whether or not it's worthy of uh, consideration, uh, just ask. Uh, we'd be more than happy to, uh, you know, help you with the, uh, the uh, use case. So just a couple closing thoughts before we go to questions. Um, build ongoing nurturing programs. You know, one thing that we've seen uh, for sure in our study data, the days of one and done programs are long gone. You know, it used to be that it's the beginning of the quarter and we've got to hit the ball out of the park, have a fast launch of new opportunities. Everybody was running marketing programs for the first 90 days of uh, the quarter and then they turn them off. Uh, those days are gone because what happens when you turn a marketing program off after 90 days like that is you've got all these folks that you were just getting on their radar. They're just coming out of a busy time period and they're now interested and you're just starting to get on their radar and all of a sudden you turn it off and there's no longer a continuous engagement. So they fall off and out of your opportunity funnel. Uh, CRM you know, utilization, what have they done, what are they doing, what are they likely to do next? You know, there are ways that we can leverage that uh, very eloquently in your direct mail program and others. Uh, start with the experience you want your customer to have across the channels and then build on them. So there's a whole lot of opportunity in today's world working with your partners. Um, you know, start with the end in mind. What is the number one outcome you want to achieve in 2020 that you don't have today? And I absolutely guarantee you one or two of the strategies that we talked about today in the webinar will absolutely take you uh, towards that successful achievement. All right, so at this point, uh, it's time for the Q&A. And let's go ahead and I've been head down presenting. So let's go ahead and find out uh, if there's any questions. And uh, I see a couple and then Jenny or Steve jump in with any others. But 
you know, uh, one of the <laughs> one of the uh, first questions that jumped off the page for me from uh, Sam is, uh, what do you need to get started with the direct mail program in today's world? Well, that depends on you know what your target objective is and and the size and scope. You know, first of all. I uh, should start with a, uh, a meeting with someone on the Ritter's team to uh, find out what your direct mail objective is and, uh, you know, what you currently have, um, because uh, we want to look at that database, your creative assets, and, and really what you want to do with the direct mail piece. So uh, the meeting is going to be the first thing. Steve, you want to add anything to that question? If somebody wants to get a direct mail program started, uh, what do they need to prepare for the meeting? Yeah, you know, the best uh, the best thing you can do is try to bring a little bit of information regarding your product and service, your offer, and, you know, start to focus on who is the target audience. Is it going to be a customer uh, list? Is this going to be a, a newly purchased list? Or, or both, as you stated earlier. Uh, you know, that help gets the ball rolling and, and some form of a budget uh, because there's lots of different, uh, programs that you can run and from the small to the large and you know it just helps to put it in perspective um, you know when you're starting off and uh, it doesn't have to be an exact figure by all means uh, we know how price sensitive uh, everybody is but uh, really you know the difference between a thousand dollar campaign and the ten thousand dollar campaign is is significant so it helps put put everybody in the right place yeah, and the follow-up question that was, uh, how long, how much time do you typically need from the discovery meeting to getting a you know good program out the door? What's the typical amount of time? Uh, I would say you could probably execute a normal campaign in you know one to two weeks. Um, you know, typically the list and the creative tend to be the uh, the two question marks. Uh, whether or not you know new new creative needs to be made or if they've got something they repurpose uh, in-house design versus out you know going to outsource um, lists lists can be had usually in a couple days so that's uh, that's not quite as slow of a process it can be done during the creative process um, and remember keep in mind postal delivery times then uh, you factor on top of production times uh, it could be anywhere from you know three to 14 days uh, depending on the distance and the method of mailing. Perfect. Let's see. Another question uh, that I see from the group is, um, how hard is it to really clean up my list? <laughs> and I would say, you know, for that individual, uh, that depends. It really depends on the size and scope and, and, uh, and, you know, how bad it, you know, it is. Now, some are worse than others, but, you know, it's not as difficult as you would explain. You just need to focus on it and uh, and really start to peel back the labor, label, excuse me, the areas to really identify uh, where the, the issues are. Steve, you want to comment on, on list improvement? Um, yeah, look, you know, there, there's really two parts. It's you know, you got to clean the list, and then you have a pending of data, uh, which is a secondary process. Not everybody needs that, uh, but in some cases, uh, that, that can take a little longer. Uh, list cleaning can be done in a matter of one to two days, whereas a pending services sometimes take longer, uh, depending on what you want to achieve. Uh, yeah. One of the questions... Uh, that came in was if I wanted to test uh, Facebook ads with my direct mail, um, you know, how much more difficult is that? So I would say that, again, it's not that difficult at all. Uh, let me take you through the steps. Uh, first, obviously, we, we identify what the objective is for the direct mail and, and uh, the creative that, you, that we help you with or that you've prepared. And then, as I stated, uh, the first step is, do you have a a corporate Facebook Instagram account. Uh, if you do, uh, then you provide us access so that we can go in and uh, create the custom audience. We take your mailing list, uh, create a custom audience, upload that into the campaign manager tool in uh, Facebook, create that custom audience. Like I stated earlier, it typically averages about 50% match rate. So if you have you know a couple thousand 
in your target list, uh, then you'd have a thousand match. Uh, then create three uh, newsfeed ads so that they're rotating and uh, upload those. Set your budget for the daily spend. It doesn't mean you're going to spend that much. It's just if you've got a lot of activity, when you get a, an alarm that says you've maxed out, do you want to uh, add some more dollars in the uh, the budget? And then uh, go ahead and launch it. And uh, so, and as we stated earlier, uh, time you know to prepare and get that out. You know, we probably turn that around in a couple of weeks. You know, making sure we got the ads right and everything. But uh, it really does amp up your direct mail and really really help. I put Steve and my contact information on uh, the screen. So if you have questions, those are our mobile phones. We're happy to, to answer questions, you know, and help educate in any way. You've got our emails so that if you have a specific uh, follow-up question you'd like to ask, um, you know, we'd be more than happy to arm you with information and content, study data, whatever you need to become better informed to uh, have a successful 2020. It's really the purpose of today's webinar was to arm you with new insight and information of, of what's working for the companies that are growing and, uh, you know, be a resource for you so that should you have any questions today or in the future, you know where to go to get help to uh, have, uh, have uh, you know, tremendous results. And so I, are there any other questions? I see one on intent marketing. Did someone ask that, Jenny or Steve? Yeah, yeah, we saw uh, somebody had asked, you know, could you explain a little more about intent marketing? Um, I think that's a newer uh, newer tactic out there nowadays. Yeah, so think of it this way, just to, to make it really super easy to understand. So using uh, some software, a software tool that we have, uh, what we're doing is we're identifying, uh, you know, a target audience that is, looking at you know defined categories of content or interest so let's say that uh you're like us you sell a your marketing software slash services company so we would be interested in anyone that is looking at or searching for information on marketing efficacy uh marketing platforms uh any any information revolving in our world that has to do with marketing, you know, some of the things that we've been talking about today. Um, and so uh, as folks are downloading uh, information and content, the software allows us to identify them and uh, then we can target them with follow-up information that's more specific to what they're looking for from our company. So it allows you to identify a universe of folks that are downloading information uh, and then provide you the avenue to connect and follow up with them. Hopefully that helps and we can certainly have more conversation offline. All right, yeah. we're about two minutes away from the top of the hour. We promise we start on time and end on time. Are there any other questions in any area that we may have missed? And again, as a reminder, if uh, you uh, would like to speak to anyone, Steve or Joe, there's our email and phone numbers and we'll be providing a copy of today's recording. You know, we're here to help in any area. Education will arm you with the information necessary for success in 2020. Steve, any final thoughts from your, your side of the uh, world? No, look, I, I just wanted to thank you, Joe, and uh, thank everybody who attended today. Uh, it was a great session. Uh, I even learned some stuff today. I uh, hope everybody else did out there, and uh, we're excited to have a great 2020. I want to wish everybody well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's so many opportunities and avenues for success in 2020. So don't be shy. Um, the only way to start to affect positive change for improved results is by trying new things. We can run a, a small test or not test, but a uh, pilot program in any area that we discussed today, and then you'll be on your way to, to more success. So thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you.